A very good evening from Thailand. It's day two of the AFC Under-23 Championship. Reem and Roshan are coming to you from the Thammasat Stadium ahead of the Group B matches today. Um, Roshan, you've been following all of the uh, qualification journeys very closely. <laughs> so in this group, we have, of course, Syria, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Japan. Talk us through some of the highlights of that qualification round. Well, yeah, qualification was a, a long time yeah, ago now. It feels like a very, really long time ago now. Yeah. And um, sure, mm -hmm. things have changed since then. But it was, you know, Japan were very comfortable uh, in that qualifying process. 21 goals scored in three matches. Yeah. Uh, didn't concede any in those three games. So they were by far the most comfortable uh, of, the, of the sides in this group uh, through qualifying. Uh, in the other groups, it was relatively tight. Uh, Syria were in a, in a tough group as well with Jordan in there. Came down to the final match day between those two. Um, uh, Araman Barakat scoring an equaliser in the 84th minute against Jordan that saw them through uh, go through as one of the best runners up. Um, and of course, you got Syria, uh, uh, Qatar, I mean, sorry, uh, finishing top of their group. Uh, it also again went down to the final match day against Oman. Uh, they went through top of the group uh, uh, on, goal, uh, on goal difference there. So, you know, again, it's been very tough, it's been very tight for all these teams, but you know, the ones that have got here deserve their place in the competition. Mm -hmm. And we've seen the lineup for the first kickoff of the evening uh, Qatar versus Syria. Any surprises? Starting 11? Well, I think with Qatar, perhaps just one surprise with uh, Hassan Ahmad, who was their top scorer uh, in qualifying. He misses out uh, on the starting 11. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's pretty uh, strong uh, Qatari side here. We mentioned Tariq Salman uh, in our build up yesterday, you know, thinking that he will come in with all his experience of having played and won uh, the Asian Cup uh, in January 2019. And he will uh, be very important for them leading that side uh, in those central areas and, uh, you know, making sure that he brings his experience and his quality. Uh, uh, to this team. Other than that, you know, you're looking at the likes of Yusuf Abdul Risag, who's got plenty of quality uh, right. in those attacking areas. They've got Amro uh, Surag as well, who can uh, create problems for uh, the opposition today. Right. There's a lot of pace uh, in those uh, uh, attacking areas for this Qatari side. I'm interested to see how they get on uh, under Felix Sanchez here against, uh, you know, in the first game, which will be a big test for them uh, against a Syria team who, you know, I mentioned in qualifying, fought their way through. They didn't score too many goals, just yeah. five goals. Uh, in three matches in qualifying over there, but they were in a tough qualifying group along with Kuwait and Kyrgyz Republic. Uh, but they're here, they will put up a really uh, a big fight. Uh, you've got uh, Rahman Baraka leading the line for them as well. So, you know, there are players in, in certain areas, uh, there are tactical styles that they'll have to come up against, you know, to try and uh, counter serious threats and the ability that Syria have to cause issues. Right. You mentioned there that, of course, Qatar won the AFC Asian Cup last year, this time around under Felix Sanchez. Um, ambitions, of course, are very high as well for this squad. But how important is it that they grab maximum points tonight? You know, before facing the likes of Japan and Saudi Arabia, if yeah. they want to go far in this competition. Incredibly important. Uh, Japan and Saudi Arabia are two very strong sides. And, you know, that's why this game is going to be really huge for, for these two teams. It's almost a situation where you know, that cliche is the first game in any in the group stage of any competition is, is the most important. Uzbekistan proved a lot of people wrong the last time out. They lost their first game, went on to win the 2018 edition of the, of the tournament. But you'd have to say in this group, uh, this is a big game between Qatar and Syria. And you'd say whoever picks up three points here puts themselves in a, in a good position, in a strong fighting position to progress. And perhaps a team that loses, uh, see their chances of progressing uh, become very slim indeed. Mm -hmm. And historically, Syria have uh, the weakest record amongst all the teams here in Group B. But do you see them maybe, you know, surprising us with an upset or two? Yeah, why not? I mean, again, for all my analysis and, and for talking about teams tactics and, and team structures and players to look out for, yeah. football, we have to remember, is a game of random situations happening. And, you know, you could get a wonder goal from somewhere, you could get a set piece situation, uh, you could get a player sent off in a match and that changes the whole complexion yeah. of the game. So, yeah, of course, there are possibilities for Syria to surprise and I expect them to be very difficult to break down, very difficult to beat. So, you know, it's it's a tough group, uh, this one, you know, the four sides in there got decent quality. You could say that about most of the teams in the competition, in fact, uh, got decent quality throughout. So, yeah, you know, to, to answer your question, yeah, Syria could, could have the potential to cause a, a surprise or two. All right. Thanks for that, Rishan. It is the moment of truth for Syria and Qatar as they kick off 5.15pm local time. And good luck to both teams. We will see you at the halftime show.